Consent is being manufactured all around you, all the time. Do you want them boots though? That's what I learned. I learned them boots give me the drip. The drip gives me the views and the likes, and then people will like me. My social credit score will go up to cheese. Matt Gates goes full merit ass. But I'm gonna pull out all the jokes, you know? James O'Queef, Project Verit ass. It's gonna be great. This is the story that keeps on giving, I will add. Matt Gates right now, he's a, well, he's a Republican. Uh, he's a problem for the Democratic Party because he's so conservative. Right? And he can cause a lot of hiccups in passing the laws. So I should preface this. This is a, a new commercial put out by Matt Gates. Fight back at mattgates.com. Wait, there's a, a Matt Gates fight back. How do I do this? America first, always. Draining the swamp, fighting for Florida. Donate now. Drain the swamp. Stand with Gates. He's still like totally branded by all the MAGA stuff. Anyways, he put out a new ad using uh, CNN and Project Verit ass to kind of explain how he's actually been a target for a while of the deep state. It's, it would be great for the to get there. So we're going to keep running our stories to keep running it and make it so that it can't be buried. We got to that. I am 100% going to say it. And if it wasn't for CNN, I don't know that Trump would have got to that. That's probably it. I'm Matt Gates, and I approve this message. Uh, Matt Gates just had uh, an ad, and uh, that ad references Project Veritas quite a bit in the commercial. Uh, this is part of his new campaign. I don't know that Trump would have got to go to that. That's probably it. I'm Matt Gates, and I approve this message. And so I just showed you the ad there. It's really poorly done. It's totally unprofessional. And worst of all, it showcases the journalism of Project Veritas, which is a right-wing misinformation and disinformation group that... So if you're not familiar with the Project Veritas sting operation so far, Basically what they did. Oh, this is a new one. CNN staffer tells Project Veritas Network played up COVID-19 death toll freeze. Oh no, sorry, this is the same one. So basically what they did is they got uh, one of the members of Project Veritas, uh, a woman, to go onto a dating site and then uh, date or at least go on several dates with a member of CNN. And so the guy was on dates and they recorded all of it and then he revealed a whole bunch of stuff because he didn't think he was talking to pro someone who worked for Project Veritas, let alone a reporter. He thought he was speaking to someone that he was on a date with and then uh, ended up revealing the information. The CNN staffer who was secretly recorded admitted to using, admitted the network used propaganda to help get Joe Biden elected president and also said they played up the COVID-19 death tolls for ratings and that the order came down directly from the top brass. Charlie Chester, a technical director at the cable network, was filmed by Project Veritas during a series of fake Tinder dates as he explained how fear really drives up the numbers. Tinder, how did they connect to that? So were they, like, I'm guessing one day he was scrolling through, or someone in Project Veritas was scrolling through and then it was like, <gasps> holy shit holy shit this this guy works for cnn this come on we we got to do this we got to do this let's let's reel him in actually i'll let uh, james o'queef explain it in more we'll detail get back to mike tobin in just a moment with the latest out of minnesota but now yet another explosive video from project veritas tonight this may be the most revealing yet as fake news cnn has a staffer a man named charlie chester outright admitting that cnn uses covid to fear monger spread panic drive ratings purposely using a death toll numbers in a, pan a pandemic to drive ratings for political advantage you can't make this up pretty sick take a look sad news back to back to back doesn't do really well unless it affects them directly covid gangbusters are great ratings, right which is why we constantly have the death toll on the side which i have a major problem with that we're tallying how many people die every day because i've even looked at it and be like look at it and be like let's make it higher like why isn't it high enough you know today like it would make our point better if it was higher like this special red phone ring. Yeah. And they pick it up and it's like the head of the network being like, there's nothing that you're doing right now that makes me want to stick. Put the numbers back up because that's the most enticing thing that we have. 
Fake news, CNN, they refuse to comment at all following these disturbing remarks. I'll ask again, Mr. Potato Head or the Fox-obsessed Hannity uh, stalker Humpty Dumpty or his, well, sidekick, sycophant, intern, Oliver, whatever his name is. Okay, all right, you're, you're throwing out a lot, of, a lot of insults here, personal insults based on appearance, Mr. Hannity. And I mean, that's kind of rich. That's kind of rich, okay? You are basically what uh, people thought was uh, a himbo in the 1950s. It was that weird kind of 1950s physique where your only real exercise came from beating your wives. That was that was basically it. Smoking cigars, uh, having some whiskeys, and then uh, you know beating your wife. That was that was basically the 1950s alpha male, and that's that's the aesthetic that you've been putting and curating for some time now. So come on, Sean Hannity, don't don't go down this road. When are they going to take responsibility for the network's outright fraud, fear mongering, and just fake news? What's it going to take for these far left democratic extremists, sycophants and the mob and the media to actually admit they're intentionally lying to their viewers for profit, intentionally spreading baseless stories because they are obsessed with hating conservatives and hating all things Donald Trump. Three straight years, Trump, Russia, hoax, lies. Three years of nothing but conspiracy theories proven well, thanks, wrong. Comrade Boog. Outright lying, propaganda, misinformation all with an agenda to destroy Donald Trump. On this program, we're honest. Yep, we're, we're, we're in members of the press. We talk about breaking news. We do investigative reporting. I'm a conservative. I say so up front. We give opinion. We even talk about sports and culture. But we're honest about who we are. They're not. We seek the truth. We follow the facts. Everywhere CNN has been proven wrong. We've been proven right. The Russia hoax, we were right. They couldn't have been more wrong. We exposed lies and the rush to judgment against Justice Kavanaugh. All they did was peddle conspiracy theories with people that had zero evidence of credibility. We also helped expose the Justice Smollett hate crime hoax, the lies against the kids of Covington Catholic School, or CNN fake news. Yeah, they actually had to settle their defamation case filed by Nick Sandman. We exposed the lies in the impeachment shift show. And by the way, shift we show. covered the violence, the rising crime across major cities last summer. I don't care if it's a riot at the Capitol or a riot in any city. A riot is a riot and it's wrong. They were calling it fiery, but mostly peaceful. Look at that fire. Mostly peaceful. If you want to go back even further, Duke LaCroix. You're actually jangling the keys and telling everyone to look at the keys, eh? It's like, fire! Fire bad! You know fire bad, right? All of you, fire bad? Scared? Good? Yes, good. Keep watching. More money, please. UVA, Rolling Stone, Ferguson, Baltimore, and so many more. We get it right, they always get it wrong. Here with now with Reaction. Project of Veritas, CE. <laughs> it's always so smug. Ah, uh, yes. That calm look on your face that you get when someone in the room is shit and no one's going to say it out loud. Also, half of the segment uh, that he's going to be a, a part of, it's a seven-minute segment on Fox. Like, I would be pretty, pretty choked if you spent half of the segment in which you were supposed to be on air, like, burning up the time talking about how great Fox News is. You know, like you fucking get out. Yeah, we know Hannity. You love yourself. Come on. How much how much self sucking can we do before we get this going? EO and founder James O'Keefe. Let's talk about what we just heard. So what I hear well, is, well, oh, Sean, go ahead. Well, Sean, I mean, journalism is about getting to the bottom of things, uh, getting to the truth. And this man who's a director of CNN actually says in this tape, that they are telling people what to say. They don't actually let people on CNN. This is a director at CNN saying the only people they actually let on the program are people who, quote, take the bait. Now, now this is not the only thing he said. This may be the most damning thing of all the things he said in this part two series. He, talks, he implicates Jeff Zucker. He says the special bat phone rings, the red phone. He implicates the head of the network. And, you know, Project Veritas is truth. I run from nothing, nothing, I hide from nothing. I defend our methods, I defend our techniques. Oliver Darcy, everyone that has been called, there is a total cone of silence after these tapes, which means that they can't, Sean, defend what this man is saying. There is no defense. In fact, this guy, Charlie Chester, in these tapes, he's, he's upset about what he is doing. He says it's wrong for us to put these numbers on the screen and, and take advantage of death and want more death for ratings. He knows it's wrong, but he does it anyway, because in his words, fear sells. This is awful. It's the farthest thing from journalism 
imaginable. And the, and the fact that there is such silence about this, Sean, speaks volumes. And we want the numbers higher. He's talking about the number of dead people, dead Americans, in the middle of a pandemic. For political, political gain and a political agenda is more important? Yeah, I mean, he, he <laughs> expresses in this tape, he says... Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the most extreme examples of a lack of self-awareness I've ever seen. But maybe it's less lack of self-awareness and they're both just pretty clear about their posturing. Like, they, they know what's going on. They just got to talk about it. I'll let this run out for two seconds, but then I'll explain what's actually happening. I'll, I'll lift the veil on the reality of our lives. Quote, there's a problem that we're doing that. He says it's wrong that we're doing it. But if you watch this, this tape... Uh, he says that they got they got a call from Jeff Zucker, the CEO of the network, who asked, put those numbers back on that screen. We want those number we want those death numbers higher. And you see it on CNN every day. And again, the purpose of journalism is to tell the truth, is to get to the bottom of things, is to focus on, is to illuminate. Is is it's and he calls it propaganda. And he says these are the quiet things that you never are supposed to say out loud. And we it's played unbelievable it last night. That Their Matt agenda Jornick, was to, to get Donald Trump. They had a full-on network agenda. That's what he said. And Matt Dornick hasn't said a word. Oliver Dark. Now, there's a, a never-ending supply of debunks of James O'Keefe, of Project Veritas, showing their shady tactics, showing how they're duplicitous, showing how they lie, showing how they outright fabricate stories, all that kind of stuff. However, in this case, uh, and if you want to go watch one of those, I would recommend maybe Timba on Toast series. Uh, he makes excellent videos. Go check out Timba on Toast. But when it comes to this series, this, this deep undercover story, yeah, this is definitely a story of a CNN uh, executive who thought he was on Tinder dates, multiple Tinder dates. He was on his fifth date by the time uh, everything got revealed. And they did that, that fucking sensationalist shit where James O'Keefe shows up on the very last date instead of his actual date. And he's like, hey, were you expecting to see like a beautiful woman? And said, you see me. <laughs> I was about to say something very cruel, but I won't. I'll bite my tongue. And ultimately, this ends up with these CNN exposed things. But what does this really say? What, what, what are we getting to the, the bottom of here? Because Trump, uh, sorry, not Trump, but Fox News and Sean Hannity are saying things like, well, uh, clearly CNN is fake news, but we're the real news. You know, they're fake news, but we're good news. You can trust us. We're always going to tell the truth. Same thing with Project Veritas. Veritas is like, hey, we just want to get to the truth of a story. That's what journalism is after all, right? I think it's about, uh, you know, dressing up like a pimp and then trying to get uh, Acorn defunded. That's 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 journalism. That I'm I'm doing a journalism, right? Am I not? A quick little primer, if we will. Beep, beep. Propaganda. Many use the word when talking about countries like North Korea, Kazakhstan, Iran. Countries viewed as authoritarian through the lens of the Western media. Press freedom, freedom of thought. People use those terms when talking about countries like the United States, France, Australia, democracies. In 1988, Noam Chomsky co-authored a book with Edward Herman called Manufacturing Consent. It blasted apart the notion that media acts as a check on political power that media inform the public, serve the public, so that we can better engage in the political process. In fact, media manufacture our consent. They tell us what those in power need them to tell us so we can fall in line. Democracy is staged with the help of media that work as propaganda machines. Media operate through five filters. The first has to do with ownership. Mass media firms are big corporations. Often they're part of even bigger conglomerates. Their end game, profit. And so it's in their interest to push for whatever guarantees that profit. Critical journalism takes second place to the needs and interests of the corporation. The 
The second filter exposes the real role of advertising. Media costs a lot more yeah, than but they got those shoes. will ever pay. I want that drip dough. So who fills the gap? Advertisers. <laughs> and what are the advertisers paying for? Audiences. And so it isn't so much that the media are selling you a product, their output. They're also selling advertisers a product, you. How does the establishment manage the media? That's the third filter. Yeah. Journalism cannot be a check on power because the very system encourages complicity. Yeah. Governments, corporations, big institutions know how to play the media game. They know how to influence the news narrative. They feed media scoops, official accounts, interviews with the experts. They make themselves crucial to the process of journalism. So those in power and those who report on them are in bed with each other. If you want to challenge power, you'll be pushed to the margins. Your name won't be down. You won't be getting in. You've lost your access. You've lost the story. When the media, journalists, whistleblowers, sources, stray away from the consensus, they get flat. That's the fourth filter. When the story is inconvenient for the powers that be, you'll see the flat machine in action discrediting sources, trashing stories, and diverting the conversation. To manufacture consent, you need an enemy, a target. That common enemy is the fifth filter. Communism, terrorists, immigrants. A common enemy, a boogeyman to fear, helps corral public opinion. Five filters, one big media theory. Consent is being manufactured all around you, all the time. Do you want them boots though? That's what I learned. I learned them boots give me the drip. The drip gives me the views and the likes and then people will like me. My social credit score will go up cha -ching! Most cursed info I've ever learned is that Amy Goodman used to date Alan Dershowitz. Well, ultimate bad boy, am I right ladies? <laughs> so, let's have some fun with art and craft. Oh, we're back now. Now time for for art and craft. I think people have it in their eyes uh, that the system kind of kind of works like this. All right. So here I'll draw the evil government. <laughs> Look at that top hat. Here it is. It's a happy evil, happy evil henchman, right? And he's like, yeah, I got a got a thumbs up because I'm doing evil things. So the the evil government will will say to media, right, aka me, no, but like the mainstream media, will we'll say to the media, hey, uh, could, could you tell everyone China bad? And then right afterwards, it's going to come out in, in a newspaper and you're going to see this and then there'll be little headlines here. But then the, the headline will say, China, surprise, surprise, bad. And, and they think that's that's how the world works, right? We've got the evil elites who control everything and then they control the media who in turn will then tell us the narrative and the consent is manufactured. Where it's more like this, the media, sure, will you shocked monkey? How is this the media? Okay, sure. So this is the media. <laughs> Maybe I should put some labels on because this is going to get confusing very quickly. So here we go. Here's the media, everybody, for some reason. And this is the eyeball. And this is you. This is, this is your eyes, right? So the media wants you to pay attention to them. So in order to do that, they're going to want to feed you story X. Story X, of course, will get you a little bit afraid, a little bit scared, which will in turn make you want to continue this perpetual cycle of, of checking out the media. 
And in turn, that will allow them to sell this cycle for money. And so they sell this whole cycle for the monies to, to advertisers. That's, that's how that next step works, right? Now, in terms of the consent manufacturing, who owns the media sometimes can definitely influence the narrative that they're saying. In the case of, say, Rupert Murdoch, he will tell you, yes, I'd like you to report on how black-on-black uh, -black crime statistics are uh, outrageous and out of control, and not report on other things such as systemic racism, historical racism, any modes of oppression, you know, uh, critical race theory. Don't talk about all that stuff. That stuff, I don't care. But I do want you to talk about a shooting that took place in Chicago yesterday and then put it on the front page. Keep doing that. That's all on Rupert Murdoch to do. But that same system is still privy to this cycle, right? Fox News could be pushing forward the most racist, backward stuff all day. But if that's not going to keep people clicking on their websites, well, then they're going to have to alter their game a little bit. They're still going to have to twist and tweak it ever so slightly to continue to get dim eyeballs because the eyeballs or what it all comes down to, right? You need to have a lot of people constantly watching and then just looking over and then being like, oh, well, that's amazing. I did not know about these things. Now I'm interested and afraid. You've got me ever so scared. I'm gonna hold on to my cheeks here. This is how the media works, but look at how nervous and horrified people are, right? Anyways, this cycle continues to perpetuate itself. At the same time while this is all happening, we've got, let's just say, the government. <laughs> okay, sure. So then we have the government. Now, the government, your government, is going to be doing a whole bunch of things, ironically, to fuck up the planet, right? Basically, to control the planet. So your government is going to do things that are going to maintain the American empire and keep it quite as good as possible. You've been sold this lie, as have all of us, that there's some kind of idea of American ex exceptionalism and that they're really trying to spread love and democracy around the world. What they are trying to spread is their tentacles, their military bases, in order to control and utilize other countries' resources for extraction and basically to enrich and maintain their power, to maintain their control. They don't want to disrupt that uh, maintain and control of power. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole military industrial complex, how that is in tune, feeding into the military itself, etc., etc. But let's just say, as a very, very cursory summary glance, that's what they're doing. So, the media, which again are going after this thing here, want to continue this perpetual cycle. They do not like things that seem to destabilize this cycle. They do not like things that seem to maybe make this person less concerned about watching and trusting them, aka people who say things like, you are fake news. Now, this becomes very, very difficult when we talk about someone like Donald Trump, a neo-fascist or proto-fascist, if you will, who is ascending to power and doing a lot of the play-by-play -play of the Mussolini, right? Basically, or, or you know, pick your favorite, Godwin's Law, uh, talking about the Lugan press, the fake press, the line press, stuff of that nature. If you are in that arena and you're concertedly and effectively weaponizing this kind of anger and you're getting a lot of people to distrust and lower the clicks, aka removing their ability to keep the eyeballs on the profit motive, yes, this person who runs them, uh, the person behind the media, is also going to have a profit incentive. Hey, by the way, this Donald Trump guy seems like he's consistently convincing people that we're fake news. It seems like he's destabilizing a lot of plans of the government to maintain their hegemonic jingoistic control over the entire planet. Not in any way that we have a, a stance in which we have to report on some kind of ideological framework and can keep that consistent. No, the thing that's controlling everyone here in this cycle, and I think I, at this point everyone probably understands, the thing that is perpetuating everything under capitalism is just, ugh, it's not as effective unless my pen is real thick. Yeah, look at that. Look at this thickness. Girth is the money's. That's, that's the incentivization behind all of this. Behind all of this. No, Trump is not a safer. Trump is a neo-fascist. But there's a reason why CNN is now being exposed by Project Veritas as for some reason. Like everyone's like, whoa. But so this means that CNN is fake news and that Fox News is real news? Does this mean that CNN is fake news and that uh, maybe uh, this other person, Project Veritas, is real news? No. No. It, it means that these are all corporations, businesses, companies. They all operate like all corporations, businesses, and companies do under capitalism. They have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to turn profit. Is that to say that there's not great reporting that takes place? Of course there is. There, There is incredible journalists. I mean, they're becoming few and few and far between these days, but there are people who genuinely get into this entire field and arena because they want to make a difference, because they want to expose stories, because they want to do good in the world, right? You still see uh, a Ken Klippenstein, for example, who will do incredible reporting about bottles of piss. But still, it was necessary, and it's really good that he did that, and I don't want to be reductionist and say that it's not important or anything like that. But anyways, 
those can exist within the system. But there is still, and this is the problem under capitalism, an overbearing profit incentive to continue this cycle. Because nowadays, thanks to people like me, millennials, we have destroyed modern media. We don't buy newspapers, all right? It used to be in the olden days, the majority of the money that came in to your newspaper organization would be from people subscribing to you. Kind of like what this is, except I'm an opinion piece, not a journalist. But that's kind of what this concept is. You just subscribe. Thank you, Poyes, Poyes Panic. Because Poyer's Panic subscribed, I can now pay rent and eat. Because of that, I'm able to continue to do what I do, which is to be a clown on the internet. But that was that was the olden day cycle. And then and then that changed, unfortunately. Whereas now, all the money comes from, the majority of money comes from advertisers. So they have to think of a couple things. One, we don't want to piss off our advertisers. So we can't say things that are going to be counter to whatever the current Overton window's at. And luckily, the Overton window seems to be moving into a direction that is... Uh, pro LGBTQ rights, things of that nature. So the corporate people uh, who want to continue to make profit, they're incentivized by profit at the end of the day, are following those lines. What will make us the most amount of money? What will get us the most amount of uh, interaction, engagement? It's all about your eyeballs, though. That's that's ultimately what they want. Lord Orc Lord Orculon, Lord Oculon wants your time. That's this this whole thing is about your time. Because that translates into demonies, right? So because of that, Advertisers, uh, advertisers will uh, pay for whoever can produce the most amount of eyeballs to them. Whoever can give them the most amount of eyeballs will be who they gravitate towards. And so this cycle perpetuates itself. It does not allow for a lot of things. It doesn't allow for true democracy. It doesn't allow for true journalism. It doesn't allow for true free speech, any, any of that. Because again, everything is being influenced and dominated by the profit motive at the end of the day. Speaking of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe of Project Veritas has been suspended from Twitter. That was a while ago. Wait, what? Did this just happen? James McQueen's the project- I thought Project Veritas was taken off Twitter. Oh, but his personal account! Oh, shit. This comes after O'Keefe posted multiple videos of a CNN employee that were filmed undercover at various bars and restaurants. The CNN employee was under the impression that he was on a series of Tinder dates, per a source familiar. This comes after Project Veritas' account was permanently banned in February. There. See, I wasn't guilt delivering you fake news. O'Keefe's account had nearly a million followers and was a major way for Project Veritas to promote its content. I reached out to a Twitter spokesman to learn more. Wow. What a cherry on the top of this story, eh? This- this all happened. Okay. Huh. Hey, do you- do you, do you like movies? Do, do you like- do you like surfs? Do you want- do you want- do you want movies and sur surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surfs- Cinema. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Can you do the thing, you know, that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives? Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just gonna be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you gotta do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks everybody. To our gods, I'm Raft and Xander Corvus. We shall build golden idols in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker. Our soft, spongy flesh is yours to command. To our lords, Evan Nudy, Trevor R., Alexander Thaler, Ryan Lubin, bisexual black gamer, Toe Fox, and Jeffrey Lamb, we proudly carry your sigils onto the battlefield. And to our knights of the round table, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Timothy Hart, Trevor Janis, Lemmy101, Anthropophagic, Saren42, Chronic to Hemphog, Kelly Kotka, The Great Poudini, Von Janney, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, J. Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Nicholas Marks, Jopi, Josh Mickelson, Melissa Murphy, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, and Constance Joyce Lacheris. We tip our cap and lift our mug and salute you.